If the sprint that we just discussed is the most commonly known aspect of Scrum, the daily Scrum is certainly the second most common aspect, or maybe that's reversed. Maybe the daily Scrum is the most known and the sprint is the second most known. Irrelevant. Sprints and daily Scrum are probably the one aspect to Scrum processes that everybody in the industry is aware of. In this nugget, I want to spend just a little bit more time detailing exactly what the daily scrum is. The daily scrum is that 15 minute. And as folklore suggests, it is a stand up. Or at least a recommended stand up meeting where you answer three questions. What did I do? What am I going to do? And what are my issues? But a scrum is much more than that. And in this nugget, we're going to discuss really what is a scrum. And it is all of the above, but there's a little bit more rhyme or reason to the daily scrum. And we'll discuss that. We'll discuss who attends the daily scrum, whether it is just the team members or whether others are allowed to participate and watch. And the most important aspect of the daily scrum, in my humble opinion, is this last part of this nugget is what's going to happen after the daily scrum. What are the actions we're going to take from the information learned in the daily scrum to ensure that our sprint remains on track. But first, what is the daily scrum? And the daily scrum is, as just discussed, a 15 minute, obviously it's daily because that's the name, inspection and adoption review. And I deliberately didn't use the word status. It's not a progress measure. A lot of people think the daily scrum is just a very quick verbal status report as opposed to a more traditional status report. And a lot of people think the daily scrum is a quick verbal progress report instead of a formal actual hours tracked, etc., etc. It accomplishes some of those objectives, but I deliberately want to not use the word status and not use the word progress measure. And I deliberately use the word inspection and deliberately use the word adoption. It's about what's going on and what can we do to fix it. to improve continuously, daily. Now, let's talk about some of those other myths around the daily scrum. It's 15 minutes. It's stand up. It's boring. It's a waste of time. Myth number one, 15 minutes. Well, it's not so much the myth is it's 15 minutes, but that the 15 minutes expands to 30 minutes and on and on and on. That's an aspect of the daily scrum. We absolutely have to ensure that we religiously expect the team to adhere to as scrum masters is respect. It's 15 minutes and no more. And we don't make it and no more by saying, oh, look at that, the clock's up, 15 minutes. Sorry, Fred, sorry, Sally. I guess I talk too much, you guys don't get to get your say. We ensure it's 15 minutes and no more by adhering to our principles of, we have an agenda, we stick to our agenda, we speak briefly and succinctly, and we move on to ensure that everyone gets the appropriate time to provide their daily inspection and adoption comments. So it's 15 minutes and no more. And again, we establish that by adhering to our principles. Is the daily scrum stand up? Can be. Doesn't have to be. Why the scrum is often referred to as the 15 minute stand up is the whole principle is if you're standing up, you're uncomfortable. 
And if you're sitting down with a fresh coffee and a donut, you're settled in for the long run and you're more than happy if it turns into a 30 minute meeting or a 45 minute meeting. So the concept of stand up is there to help ensure that we adhere to our 15 minutes and no more. But I personally do not have my daily scrums as stand ups. I think people are actually a little more comfortable and a little more participatory when they are comfortable. So I absolutely let them sit down, but I stick to my guns and I keep it to 15 minutes. A lot of people say the daily scrum is boring because everybody just drones on. Today I worked on this and tomorrow I'm going to work on that and no, I don't have any problems. And the next person drones on and on and on. Yes, we are asking the same three questions to all six or all seven team members, but it's not intended to be a drone on. It's intended to be informative and it's intended for team action and team decision making. And if you remember, everything we do in our sprint is team focused. If our team members focus their activity, their report on, here's what I've been working on and implied, here's how it's going to impact you guys. Here's what I'm going to work on. By the way, I'm about to pick up story number two, and this is the big one we've been worried about. So I'm probably going to call a team swarm who wants to play and impediments. These are my problems. Who out there can help me fix this? Can a fellow team member help me fix this? Or is this impediment I'm going to expect my scrum master to take on and deal with for me? So very, very powerful process, our daily scrum. I am going to re-emphasize it is mandatory. No one skips. No one can say, oh, I'm working on an important story. I really want to get the story done. I'm going to skip the daily scrum. Excuses are not accepted. No one skips. No excuses. If you're out of the office, if you're sick, if you're on vacation, you don't necessarily have to call in to a daily scrum, it would be nice. But if you're in the office and functional on the sprint, attendance at the daily scrum is absolutely mandatory. When do we hold the daily scrum? At a convenient time. And what's a convenient time? Is first thing in the morning? Is just before lunch? is just after lunch, is the end of day the most convenient time for your team. Every team is going to have the, their own dynamics. You need to find a convenient time or the most convenient time for the most of your team members and then basically insist that every team member adopts to the, the selected time. Do not use the mandatory daily scrum as a way of enforcing work hours. I personally am an early bird. I like to, to be at the office very early and often get frustrated by the fact that some of my team members are almost the opposite of me and they like to come in late. Um, I'm not going to say my early bird tendency says daily scrums will always take place at 8.30 in the morning, recognizing that some of my team members are, are never in at 8.30 and I'm not going to use it as an enforcement policy. I'm going to find a time. I'm at my best early in the morning, so maybe I will try to find a time mid-morning, 10 o'clock, 10.30, that all of my team members are typically in for. I'm still at my best, and I'm probably still catching them at their peak. By then, hopefully by 10 o'clock, they've had a chance to wake up and, and move forward. So when? At a convenient time, but find a convenient time because we're going to make this daily scrum mandatory. And we're going to focus on these three things. What have you done since the last scrum? I.e. in the last 24 hours. Or better still in the last eight hours. Because we're not expecting anyone to be working overtime in a scrum environment. What are you going to do for the next eight hours? 
And what are the impediments? What are the concerns? What are the issues? What are the risks that are keeping you from accomplishing your goals? And who attends the Daily Scrum? I've already said it's mandatory for all team members, so that speaks for itself. The key point I want to make here is the Scrum Master and the Product Owner are team members. So therefore, we absolutely expect the Scrum Master and the Product Owner to participate in all Scrums. But, and this is a very significant but, they're both participating as team members. They're equals in the Daily Scrum. The Scrum Master is responsible. for making sure the scrum happens. I.e. as the person who ensures scrum principles are applied in our sprint, the scrum master is responsible for making sure that the daily scrum happens, that it adheres to the principles of the daily scrum, but the scrum master does not run the daily scrum. The daily scrum should be all team members as equal participants and we want to ensure that the daily scrum is non-personal and story focused. So although the team member is likely to say since the last scrum I worked on story number 15 the rest of the discussion should be not so much related to personal characteristics or personal actions of the team member, but should be focused on activity around the story. The story is in analysis. The story development is complete, not I have completed analysis or I have completed development. Focus on the story put the story as the focus, and again, that helps it ensure it is a participatory, non-personal event. Now, we're saying the Scrum Master ensures the Scrum happens, but then participates as an equal. Participating in as equal is also very, very critical for the product owner. The product owner owns the sprint, the product owner owns the stories, but the product owner has no right to change the plan. The stories were picked, confirmed in sprint planning. The plan was made as to how the team was going to complete all of the stories in the sprint, the team retains ownership and responsibility for the execution and delivery. The product owner is there as a participating team member as an equal. The product owner will say, in the last day, here's what I did. I focused on grooming and stories 1, 8, and 19 are now in much better shape. The stories have now got what is done criteria assigned. The product owner is going to report other activities, other plans, but as a participating equal towards the completion of the scrum and has absolutely no rights to change the plan and the team retains all of the rights. A last comment about who attends a daily scrum is others may observe. If the business owner or a SME or SMEs have an interest in the particular stories that we're working on at this point in the sprint, the business owner and SMEs are absolutely welcome to come and observe. And literally observe is all they're allowed to do. They're not allowed to comment. They're literally not allowed to open their mouth. They are there to participate, sorry, to participate, to observe and understand what's going on in the sprint. If they have concerns, they can take them offline and talk to the scrum master, or they can take them offline and talk to the product owner. But anyone else is there to observe 
and that's it. All other discussions? Offline. And speaking of taking all other discussions offline, that leads directly into our next subject is what happens after the daily sprint, because that's where the real value to our daily sprint takes place. So recognizing that there are only three things discussed in this daily scrum. What did I do in the last eight hours? What am I going to do in the next eight hours? And what are my impediments? There's a lot of activity has to take place after the daily scrum. And to me, again, these three questions are our key to the follow on activities. And as a participating daily scrum member, and probably more appropriately as the scrum master, I need to keep my ear open to any discussion that moves beyond, here's what I did, here's what I'm going to do, and here are my impediments. These have to be short, succinct, and focused to get us in and out of the daily scrum in our 15 minutes. And as soon as I hear two team members begin to have a discussion, I say, whoa, that's a follow on activity. That's what needs to happen after the daily scrum. So what happens after the daily scrum? I, as the scrum master, I need to set to work and do the things that I am empowered to do and that's to remove the impediments. I should be making note during the daily scrum of any of the problems, issues, warnings, concerns, bothers, by the ways that come up in my 15 minute meeting with the daily scrum. I need to make note of all of those impediments and I need to set to work to remove them. And I need to be prepared to report back tomorrow. Tomorrow, I may be simply reporting back that says, Fred, I heard your concern yesterday and I've opened discussions with senior management. They're aware of it. And I have a meeting scheduled to follow up with them in a week's time after they've had some time to review it. So there's no guarantee that we're going to get all of the impediments removed in the next business day. But as the scrum master, I absolutely need to be prepared to report back to the team that says, I heard your concern. Here's the action that I'm taking. Here's my plan to resolution. And I'll let you know what the resolution is when the time comes. The key activity that has to happen after our daily scrum is the detailed, the technical discussions. This is what I had my ear open for during the scrum. As soon as I hear two team members beginning to have a chit chat about something that Fred did or Fred is going to do, if they don't automatically say, oh, that's not a scrum activity or a daily scrum activity, let's take that offline. It's my job as the scrum master to put up my hand and say, you're going beyond the mandate of our daily scrum. Could you please make a commitment to talk to each other after this meeting? And ideally, these detailed technical discussions take place immediately afterwards. People have already left their desks. People have already broken their work pattern to attend the daily scrum. So what better time to have these detailed technical follow-up discussions than immediately afterwards? Fred and Mary are going to sit down and have that discussion that got initiated in the daily scrum and continue. Betty and Sally are going to follow on. So ideally it happens immediately afterwards, but if you have one team member that needs to be in three discussions, Obviously, that one team member can't be in three discussions simultaneously, or if they can, there are certainly a, a much better team member than I am because I, I only do one job well, and sometimes I don't even do one job well at a time, but I certainly don't do three jobs well. But again, technically, we want these detailed discussions to take place immediately afterwards, or at least a commitment when there are more follow-on discussions than, than possible. 
as quickly as possible after the scrum because we want the scrum to be action oriented and we want everybody to leave the scrum or the immediate follow on discussions leave the scrum with a well focused understanding action for how they're going to get through their next eight business hours. Often we will need to schedule a sprint replanning session. So we have our sprint backlog and I'm going to draw it very roughly here. And I probably didn't need the borders and we have our three columns and we have our people assigned and we're now a third of the way into the scrum and we begin to realize that the workload on Sally is very heavy. Some of the stories were, were misestimated and therefore we will go into short focused sprint replanning activities focused on making sure we have a strategy to complete the sprint within the available time. And depending on the nature of the problems that come up in this, the sprint, you may need to be prepared to do sprint replanning sessions daily. Hopefully your original plan will have more longevity than having to be reworked daily, but expect changes to happen and expect to make the appropriate adjustments to relieve the workload on Sally, to make sure that Fred is busy, to make sure that the assumption that Betty had the skills to do a, a story are true and that we don't have to re-plan the work. Make sure people understand what team's form requirements are coming up and so on and so on and so on. And take action to resolve any other issues that weren't immediately called out in these three points. And finally, consistent with what we discussed at the end of the last nugget in the sprint, be prepared to work with the product owner to add and remove stories from the sprint plan based on the information that we gathered from our scrum. We're now three days left in the sprint and we don't think we're going to have enough time. So we need to work with the product owner to remove or we think we have more time, we need to work with the product owner to add the stories. So without sounding like the proverbial broken record that I always am, the daily scrum is important because it ensures that all of your team members are on the same page, but I believe it's what happens after the daily scrum that is critical to keeping our sprint on track. And that's literally the corrective actions identified based on the information gathered in the daily scrum. This nugget focused on one of the most commonly known aspects of scrum delivery, the daily scrum, where most people believe it's a 15 minute stand up meeting that answers three questions. What did I do? What am I going to do? And what are my issues? And in this nugget, we discussed that yes, the daily scrum is all of the above, with the possible exception that the stand up is optional. But through the answering of these three questions, we get information about how we're doing in the, scr in the scrum, in the sprint, and what we need to do to fix it. And that's really what the daily scrum is, is it's an information sharing and improvement. And we absolutely enforce that it happens in 15 minutes. And we deliberately didn't use the word status or, or the word progress because those have too much measurement and remediation where we want our daily scrum to be focused on information sharing and improvement. We discussed who attends the daily scrum, the team, all of the team, it is mandatory, and the scrum master and the product owner participate as equals. They share status, they share information as, as one of the team. 
They have no veto power. They have no override power. They have no management power. They are simply part of the team. And in this nugget, we focused on what happens after, which is where all of the process improvement corrective actions and follow on discussions take place which are so important to keep in our scrum on track. This concludes our nugget on the daily scrum. I hope this module has been informative for you and thank you very much for viewing.